I will tell you that flying a camera drone FPV style is harder than flying a FPV drone FPV style. <laughs> but the picture is crystal clear. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I have the Drone Mask. This is a pair of goggles that goes over your phone and allows you to see an FPV view from your camera drone. We have two of these, actually. Drone Mask supplied both of these for me to review and to give away. I'll be giving these away on first Friday, April 1st, 2022, coming up pretty quick. So you'll wanna tune in for that if you wanna win one of these pairs. So stay tuned and we'll check it out. So as you open the drone mask, very nice boxing. Uh, these are also designed by two Norwegian guys, I believe, which I think is kind of cool because my brother-in-law is from Norway. I've been there, it's a beautiful place. They are designed in Norway and they come in a bag right here. And you can open the bag and inside is the actual goggles along with some, I'm guessing, some of those things you're not supposed to eat. Yes, do not eat, throw away. Uh, these are what keep the humidity out of it. And the instructions actually say, Tusen tak, which means, I think, thank you in Norwegian. So that's kind of cool. First impression straight out of the box is they feel pretty lightweight. They feel very solid, like well-made. You know, they don't feel like cheap plastic. They've got some kind of a cloth covering over them that looks like it kind of keeps everything from rattling or feeling uh, cheap. I believe they have pretty good um, light blocking capabilities. Oh yeah, when I put them over my eyes like this, I am not seeing any light leak at all and I'm sitting under a bunch of bright lights. Now, let me go ahead and actually put them on my head. Yeah, totally pitch black. And they're pretty simple. There's no electronics in these whatsoever. These are just a pair of lenses, a case, and a spot to hook your phone. It looks like to hook your phone in there, you've got some elastic that holds the phone in place, and then it zips up like this, and that's what blocks out all the light. Now, one other thing that I think is a big differentiator of these versus other um, pairs of goggles is it's one lens that is allowing the light from your phone. It's not splitting your phone in half. So like with VR and uh, 3D stuff, you actually have two uh, different images that are repeated, you know, image A and image B. They're the same thing, but there are two instances of it that go over your eyes so that you can look around and kind of see things in three, 3D space. This does not do that. This just uses the image from whichever app you're using, whether it's DJI or Autel or whatever, and the diopter in here, the, the lens that's in these things, is going to actually magnify it so that you can see clearly across it, uh, you know, kind of edge to edge as if you were watching a movie in a movie theater. Okay, so here I have an iPhone 12, and it's the standard size iPhone 12. It's not the uh, ginormous one, but they're still pretty big phones compared to what they were five years ago. And I have a USB-C to lightning cable. Now, I'm gonna try this out on both the Autel Lite and the uh, DJI Mavic Mini 2. I think it's just called the Mini 2, actually. Wow, and the view is actually really good. As far as being able to see the screen, um, yeah, I can see it perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can... Take off. As far as uh, flight experience, I mean, I'm indoors and I'm about to hit Chris, so. <laughs> I saw all that. I uh, hit the light, huh? That went up into it? Ah, oh, dang. All right, well, first of all, probably flying uh, indoors with these goggles on is not a great move. Um, what happened is I went up and hit the light. I went up into the light. There's no sensors on this thing. I forget it's a Mini 2 with no obstacle avoidance. Uh, 
The picture quality is great. Um, I can see very, very well. Um, I do have some glasses that I will try on and see if they work under here. I don't really need the glasses or not super strong prescriptions or anything like that. The only thing I think you would run into an issue with, and I have saw several other reviews that mention this, is if you have to touch something on the phone in order to uh, change a setting or update something or whatever, you don't have access to touch the phone, right? You only have access to what's on the remote control. I do have these glasses. They are a very light prescription. Um, and so I can see okay without them, but I just figured I'd try it with them because I want to see if they'll fit, if it'll fit over them. Oh yeah, okay, even even better. Yeah, okay. So when it's that close, it's a little blurry even with my glasses on, but when I pull it apart like that and lock it, um, yeah, it's crystal clear through the glasses. So that's actually the way to go. At least in my brief testing, you can use a USB-C to lightning cable, and I'll put a link below for the one I bought that works, but you have to plug it into the top of both of these. You can't plug it into the USB-C on the bottom. Okay, so after doing this the wrong way, I realized something didn't seem quite right, and I got out the manual, RTFM, and this manual is actually well-written. It's got uh, pictures, lots of pictures that show you exactly what to do, and it turns out I was putting the uh, phone in backwards and wasn't doing it the right way. So the right way to do it is to actually just um, have the cord come straight out. You don't have to do all that bending that I was doing before and just put the zippers right up to it. So basically it creates a natural gap where the cord can come out, you know, and you just zip up to either side of that, number one. And then number two, you have this little hole where the Velcro goes. This Velcro was on the inside and you can leave it open so that your phone has its camera facing outward. So if you wanted to do some sort of augmented reality thing with the camera so that you could be looking through it and seeing the view of the camera, that allows you to do so. So that's what this little piece of Velcro is for, is just a gap. Um, like for me, I'm not doing that, so basically I can just take it and put the, um, put the Velcro back in. But yeah, you see how that uh, cable is just coming straight out of it like that, and then I'm zipping up to it. Don't try to bend the cable, that was a bad idea. And you don't need a 90 degree lightning cable or USB-C cable either. Okay, we have the Mini 2 out here and the drone mask. I will say too that much like with regular uh, FPV goggles, you probably wanna be careful not to put the lenses into the sun. The sun is quite bright out here right now. Uh, although there's not a, there's not a uh, screen inside these except for your phone. So when your phone's not in there, it should be okay, but just out of habit, keep the lenses out of the sun. And I'm wearing my glasses. Oh yeah, that looks really good. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna walk over to the wall and lean against it so I don't get dizzy. So I'll start recording here. If you are used to flying FPV, you've had this experience before, and you can definitely appreciate what this looks like and how immersive it is. And the quality of the image, I mean, this is an iPhone 12, and so the, the quality of the image from the phone is fantastic, and the uh, goggles really create an even more immersive experience. Um, with my glasses on and with these pulled out and adjusted like they are, the picture is crystal clear. I have to actually move my eyes left and right to see the whole thing because it looks really big in my eye. I'm looking over at the tower right now and I'm now I'm going to do a little orbit around the tower. And yeah, it just, it, it, it helps kind of block out other distractions. You know, it just gives you this sort of focus so you can make maneuvers and stuff like that. And I've got a fairly narrow uh, window here that I can land in, in between cables and the building. Um, really solid picture. All right, let's try the Evo. Same setup as last time. I will say the screen on the Evo Lite is a lot busier than the, um, the Evo Lite Fly, or no, the Evo Lite Sky app. The screen is a lot busier than the, than the Fly app. 
but that's all right. That might actually be a good thing because it means I've got more data to work with. And let's see, which one is record? There we go. And, but it looks great. And here we go. I would say I am uh, more impressed than I expected to be with these as far as the quality and the, and the look of it. Now I know they're not cheap, but they don't feel cheap and, and they feel quite, uh, quite high quality and that's kind of what you're paying for, I guess. So still flying around the tower. Uh, I think I'd love to give Chris a try at these. So I'll trade him uh, the controller and the camera. What do you think? I feel like I'm zoomed in a lot just, just because the screen is so big. And, and I'm able to, I guess, be more delicate with my movement or I guess I, I can see every little motion that I'm making. And I can probably get better, better shots and more um, accurate. Yeah, more be more accurate with what I'm filming because I can see every little uh, jitter that I'm making. But yeah, right now it's 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 a sunny day, and flying this without the mask would definitely be tough to see in bright sunlight. And right now, of course, with the mask on, yeah, there's no problem at all. So in terms of your expectation for these, uh, is it above, at, or below your expectations? Um, I'd say this is above. Uh, yeah, just, I, since I only fly with my phone, and, and uh, my phone's not very bright, so I'm always fighting, uh, I'm always fighting the sunlight. This is, this is kind of handy to, to, you know, have in your bag if you need it. And we're, we're not even standing in shade. We're standing in direct sunlight right now, which, which, yeah, if you had the phone, even an iPhone 12 on there at full brightness, you could see it, but boy, first of all, it would uh, kill the battery pretty quickly, potentially overheat it. Although I would be curious, it's cool today, it's March in Austin. I would be curious if this overheats your phone in, um, in the summer in Texas. If I want to go ahead and land, is this a clear spot? Uh, yeah, yeah, Under you're the good. the wires. Yep, right. you come straight down. Go to your right just a tiny bit, closer to the building, yep. And then come on down. And rotate and face up. I'm getting a lot of uh, obstacle avoidance warnings. Oh wow, it automatically stops recording. That's a, that's a feature or that's That's something. a setting, I think, in oh, okay. the Cool. Okay, so I have to say, I was, just like Chris, more impressed with these than I thought I would be. Um, I have flown a lot of FPV. I've used the original DJI goggles that they had for the original Mavic Pro. I've used the RE edition. I've used both version one and version two of the DJI FPV goggles, and these things, while they don't have all the functionality, the look is very similar. It's a very immersive look. Your phone is at just the right distance. They've figured out the optics so that you can see it very clearly. They fit your glasses, which is really nice. You can put them underneath it. I can see on a bright sunny day when you're trying to get a really good shot and the sun is beating down and you can't see your phone very well, this could help you get that shot a lot more than trying to fly with just your phone alone or even a smart controller looking down at that. There's no distractions. You can see very clearly. You really wanna have a spotter with you because your situational awareness is not great when you're wearing these. But as far as getting really good shots and having an FPV experience, I think these are a pretty cool option, especially if you're not an FPV drone pilot and you don't wanna be one, you just wanna use it for camera drones. These come in real handy. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check these out. As I said, we're giving away two pairs of these to folks. Uh, so thanks again to Drone Mask for providing these so that we could give them away. Tune in for First Friday, April 1st, 2022. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.